This question here is a classic um, unit conversion question involving speed, right? Kilometers per hour to meter per second. Classic. You must have done it so many times in your previous physics course that this is hopefully review. But I do want to go over it with you guys to make sure everyone is complete up to speed <coughs> on this kind of unit conversion, but also to demonstrate my method of multiplying by one and tracking the units like it's algebra. Because sometimes it's easy to get a little lazy and just do a whole bunch of calculation and tack on the units at the very end. But it's very good practice to keep track of the units as if we're doing regular algebra. And I'll show you how. So in part A, we are starting with 100 kilometers per hour, right? That's kilometer divided by one hour. And then at the very end, we want to end up in something in meters per second. So to do so, when I do unit conversion, what I do is I multiply by factors of one, meaning that the ratios that the top is the same as the bottom, but they have the appropriate units in the sense that I want to get rid of the kilometer on top. So I put a kilometer on the bottom. I want to end up with a meter. So I put a meter on top, but I want to make sure the top and the bottom are the same size. Otherwise I'm multiplying by a number that's not one and it changes the number and that's not what I want, right? I'm just converting units. I'm not changing the actual value, quote unquote. So for one kilometer, there are a thousand kilometers, right? Doing this has the advantage to really help you track whether you're multiplying or dividing by whatever factor you're dealing with, because it's very clear that we will put the thousand on top because 1,000 meters stands for one kilometer and the kilometer cancels out with that kilometer. Then we want to change this time underneath from an hour to a second. In case you can't remember off the top of, it, of your head how many seconds are in an hour, just do this in two steps. It's perfectly fine. I know that one hour can be broken down into 60 minutes. And again, this helps me remember that I put the 60 underneath get rid of the hour, not have minutes, and I want that in seconds. So I put the minute on top, every minute there are 60 seconds, right? And then now I'm down to my correct units of meters on top and seconds on the bottom. And of course, sometimes you can combine these and make this 3,600, but you know, you can always just do it separately. And then at this point, everything's laid out. We got the right units. It's just calculator work. Technically, a seven repeating meters per second. Now, of course, if we started with 100 kilometers flat, it's kind of unrealistic to get, you know, infinite amount of decimal places. So let's just keep, say, three digits here and call it a day. And there you go. It's really a good review on how to convert units using these successive factors of one so that we're keeping track of whether things go on top or the bottom. And hopefully that's the way you will do it in this course going forward. Part B, very similar. We're talking about miles per hour in this case. It's even easier, but um, living in Canada, we're often having to contend with um, silly units that people use down south. So we start with, again, 100 kilometers per hour. And we want to end up with some number of miles per hour or how many miles divided by every hour. Some people call it MPH as well. That's just the way it's written. And we're here given the conversion factor right here. But of course we want kilometers on the bottom to get rid of this kilometer and the miles on top. So the one mile goes like that. Tracking units again reminds us we're dividing by 1.609, not multiply by 1.609. Then it's just more calculator work giving us, that's got 62.2 miles per hour. 